What began as the Hillsboro 2020 Vision and Action Plan is now the Hillsboro 2035 Community Plan. And it is the ultimate reflection of community engagement, community ideas, and community visioning. And now that we're in 2024, it's time to update the plan as we do every five years. Now this year we're focusing on elevating and incorporating even more voices and more diversity into our planning and into our ideas. So this has been a community conversation that has been 25 years in the making from when we first started with our Hillsborough 2020 Vision and Action Plan. I'm Steve Calloway, Hillsborough Mayor. Thank you so much for joining us. And thanks to our panel who is here with us today. We have Jorge Cano Rodriguez, who is um, a member of our 2035 Community Engagement Committee and also works for Central Cultural. We have Desha Bakum, who serves as the program lead for 2035. And we have Simone Brooks, our assistant city manager, who is a, a committee member on the 2035 Community Engagement Committee. Thank you so much you know, for being here and just sharing the great updates and um, as well as some of the history you know, with 2020 and 2035. So you know, because this is um, an exercise where we receive hundreds of ideas, sometimes thousands of ideas from our community. Share with me, share with us, what is one of the, your favorite ideas, you know, that could be, you know, just realistic or maybe just fantastical, you know, creative. What, what is your favorite idea that you've heard? One of my favorite ideas is having an amusement park like this night in here. Nice. Uh, at Disneyland in Hillsboro. <laughs> cool. Um, I really enjoyed the kids' ideas, like a park with uh, fake volcanoes and robots to do chores. Nice. Yeah. Piggybacking on that, and excuse yeah. the reference to Piggy, but a farm park tied with the name of Hillsboro residents and our own flag. Oh, very good. Yeah. I've heard those latter two many times and, and maybe maybe we'll get there. Um, so when people share an idea with, you know, with the committee, you know, then how do we, you know, how do we respond to them, especially when it's, you know, one of those ideas like an amusement park or let's bring an NFL team to Hillsboro. They say, how do we respond? Yeah, we love that. We encourage um, community members to dream big, think big. What's, you know, what do you want? And we take all ideas. Um, it doesn't matter if we can find a community partner willing to implement that action and enough people that have the same interest, we will do our best to get it in the plan. No promises, but, but we'll try. And, and so you mentioned a lead partner. So when the ideas come in, you know, the city just doesn't do it. The city helps find a lead partner for that idea. And then you have uh, support partners who join with that lead partner. And that's how those ideas then come to reality and come to fruition. Yes. Very good. And, um, and that is truly why it is the community's, you know, um, plan. So Simone, you know, tell me, why do we have a community plan? Well, it's about the hopes and dreams of our community and our city council is very tied into what our community wants. And so when there is consensus around ideas and things that the city is able to take on and can find resources for, city council will prioritize some of those things. And that directs staff to where we should be investing our time and energy to try to make those things happen. And I concur wholeheartedly with you know, council priorities and goals, you know, there have been times when we've brought things forward and it's like, you know what, that is not part of, or it maybe flies in the face of a 2035 plan or idea. We can't, so we, that cannot be a council priority if it's not a community priority. So that's a great point. Jorge, why do we have a community plan for you? For me, it's just to essentially hear what our community's hopes and dreams are. Um, what are they envisioning for the city in the future as well? And you went to elementary school, I went, yeah. middle, high school. So you grew up here. Okay. And so, you know, the, the 2020 and 2035 community plan really has helped, you know, form your experiences from childhood to adulthood. Okay. Yeah. So I, that makes great sense as to why Right. We have it, but also why it's a priority. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Dacia. 
Um, it it provides, um, I second what um, both Simone and Jorge said, but it provides an avenue for folks to engage with us and let us know what's important to them. And I think um, from a city employee perspective, instead of us telling community community what we think they want, mm -hmm. we're letting them tell us what they want. It helps us prioritize our work um, going forward. So why do we do five-year updates, you know, like we're just about to start? Yeah, we have a, a lot of new people coming into the community. The community is growing and changing. And so we update the plan every five years to keep it relevant and current. So yeah. it's, it's a dynamic plan. It's not yes. something that's just created and put on a shelf and then we take it down every 20 years. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And um, so then ideas maybe that didn't come about five years ago that it may be time yes. or, okay, very good. Simo, can you put into words, you know, the impact that the community plan has had? I think a perfect example is our investment in the property on 17th Avenue um, for the sh new year-round shelter. Um, one of the things that came out of the plan and then became a council priority was to address um, homelessness regionally um, with regional partners. And I think that's a perfect example of how we make investments. Um, additionally, the location of Grand Central Bakery and Backwood Brewery is in the old U.S. Bank building. And we were supposed to invest in our downtown town um, core and now we have a wonderful draw for tourists visitors and people who live here nice and when you talked about the um, you know the the homeless uh, shelter on 17th and that's the west the west end of town and um, you know as we have you know east and west you know Thank 17th you. yeah and um, and we've talked about that in previous community conversations but these are some of the ideas then that you know, when the city's wondering, how do we solve this? How do we address this? You know, our community helps us with with potential ideas and solutions, as well as feedback and direction. Um, and, you know, when you came in as an assistant city manager, and here we have, you know, the 2035 plan, I would imagine that's kind of a, a nice roadmap for you as you come in and learn the city and what we want to do. Absolutely. And it makes me happy to be a Hillsborough resident. I love that too. Thanks. Um, so what do you all then see as top accomplishments of, you know, from the previous versions? And, you know, you can go way back to the original 2020 or just, you know, the 2035. But what do you see as top accomplishments? For me, it's to highlight um, internet services mm -hmm. for our communities, especially in those regions that need that additional support. Very good. Yeah, I think one of our top accomplishments is the new Hidden Creek West Park. Um, it's a new inclusive playground and uh, very popular with community members. Good. And for someone who is very passionate about community engagement, um, I love our Civic Leadership Academy. Mm. Uh, some of our city councilors made their way through the Civic Leadership Academy. It's allowed us to bring community members in to learn more about how the city operates, including our very diverse community, and gives them a path to boards and commissions and to an elected office. And that was an idea that we now see other cities replicating, but it came from our community. Nice. You know, and, and I'm just going to throw out one of my favorites is something that I can't uh, participate in because we have counselor council Tuesday nights, but that is our Tuesday night market. And, you know, when we were looking at the 2020 and said to folks, what do you want in Hillsborough by the year 2020? And people said, we love our Saturday market. Let's do something on Tuesday night. And that's where that came from. Same thing with, um, you know, the Renko. Uh, farmer's market. That also is an outgrowth of Hillsboro 2020 slash 2035. So our community has great ideas. So as we look then to the five-year update, what do you hope to accomplish in this five-year update? We hope to reach as many as people as possible. Our goal is to reach more than 5,000 people. So of course, we want to hear what they got, what ideas they have, mm -hmm. what are their hopes and goals, like we mentioned. And 5,000 people would be about the largest you know, community engagement project we've ever done, right? if I'm not mistaken. So it's a huge, a huge lift. And so, Simone, you mentioned, you know, the Civic Leadership Academy, and they studied the engagement and outreach and gave guidance on how to help reach people. You know, what did they, what did they share? Yeah. I think the one that I was surprised by, but maybe shouldn't have been, is that they recommended that community engagement committee members go through unconscious bias 
and cultural competency training prior to doing engagement, which is fantastic because we have a diverse community, linguistically isolated, immigrant and refugee, communities of color, seniors, youth, we have um, folks who have experienced disabilities. And so they were really thinking very proactively about how to get out to this community and hit that 5,000 plus number. You know, Hillsborough is the most diverse large city in our state. So it makes sense then, you know, that we would specifically, you know, reach out. And, you know, I think of, um, you know, how Civic Leadership Academy came from an idea to 2035, and now Civic Leadership Academy is helping with the updates. I mean, the, you know, just the connectedness really is cool. And, and I think of some of the other festivals like our Latino Festival and some others, you know, that also came out of 2035. And to think that now we will be connecting with folks at festivals and activities that grew out of earlier versions it's just building on the momentum and snowballing and success building on success. And again, I just find that incredibly um, gratifying, exciting. Um, and so great job to all of you. So, you know, Daisha, I guess, you know, I mentioned a few of the ways, but what are more of the ways, you know, as we hear how we need to reach out and who we need to reach out to in the process, you know, going through unconscious bias training. So what are some of the ways that we're reaching out to get that 5,000 mark? Yeah, so we have um, a great team of people put together our community engagement committee. Um, so those folks um, will be out in the community talking to people. Um, we're working on outreach ideas around that right now, but some other ways, um, we have Engage Hillsboro this year, which is new. We didn't have it last time we did the five-year update, so mm -hmm. we'll be utilizing that. So we'll have a online survey. It's available in English and Spanish, um, available 24 seven, so people can participate whenever it's okay. convenient for them. Um, we'll also be um, reaching out via social media. We have newsletters. Um, city communications, um, you just probably start seeing flyers and yard signs and things popping up around town. Sure. But we have some really creative ideas, so um, we'll be getting the word out. Well, yeah. and and I again, I, I date myself, but realizing, you know, when we started, we didn't have access to the Internet for this kind of thing. And it was all, you know, paper, pencil face to face. And then when we started using the internet, we didn't have QR codes. Now we have the QR codes. And so it's even easier for people, you know, to give input and ideas. Um, and, you know, so um, how, do, but we also have engaged children for the first time. And so, you know, how will that help us, you know, um, with this outreach as well? We are really lucky to have engaged Hillsboro. It has been so useful for so many projects and has driven thousands, whether it's picks in the park, mm -hmm. it's the year round shelter, the camping ordinance, our park system plan. People are flocking to that because there's a way for them to provide their own input into these projects. And so now engage Hillsboro will work in both ways. Yeah. It, the projects will draw people to um, participate in the 2035 plan survey and people who are drawn to the 2035 plan survey will get to see all the wonderful things that the city is doing that have been driven by the 2035 plan. And, and so, I mean, we're marketing ourselves and that's just a great, very effective, you know, and, and you know, as we try to make sure that nobody says, I didn't know, or how come I didn't hear about it? This is just how we're making sure that you know and you hear. So Jorge, what, what do you want to hear from people during you know, this update you know, and, and outreach that we're going to be doing? I want to really see what, how they can engage into, with Hillsborough All Law, whether they've been like in my scenario, been here for quite a while, or they just recently moved into the city. So I really want to see what they are bringing in. What are their hopes to see moving on forward? What kind of services do they need? Um, what kind of um, liability items they want to see and recreation? Because those folks who have moved in come from good communities, or at least maybe a community where there was one good idea, and that could be an idea then that comes forward because it was successful somewhere else. Very good, very good. Um, so let's take an idea such as more parks for Hillsboro. You know, what happens, you know, kind of take us through that process, um, you know, and it could be 
you know, probably not an amusement park, right? Um, probably not a park with fake volcanoes, although that'd be pretty fun. Um, you know, but, you know, maybe it's a park in a new area or a new kind of park or a park that, you know, uh, you know, just supports um, all of Hillsboro. How, what's that process like? Yeah, so um, once we've collected all those ideas from community members, um, we go through a process to sort them into the focus areas that are in the plan. And from there, they're further sorted and refined into groups of like ideas. Hmm. Um, then we put together teams that we call writing teams that will look at all of those ideas and they'll create draft action language for the plan. Um, once we've done that, we share that draft action language with the community in the form of an online survey. And we'll ask community members to prioritize the actions that are most important to them. And then we'll kind of see what rises to the top from there. And then we'll set out to find community partners to help implement the actions. And then if we can accomplish that, we'll get them in the plan. Nice. And, you know, kind of an example of some of that you know, years ago, we heard folks say, we want things for our kids to do after school. And so Parks and Rec Department, working with this uh, school district, then, you know, work together to create after school programs to meet the needs, but to address that idea. Um, you know, I think of, you know, Hondo Dog Park, you know, that came out of a community idea during a five-year update, because when the original 2020, you know, had been created, dog parks weren't you know, they weren't that um, common. And in some ways they weren't that necessary, but with smaller yards, you know, then there was a need. And so boom, here comes Hondo. And, and even our community gardens, you know, where people wanted and value and understand the importance of healthy food, growing your own food. Um, yet, if you have a small yard, um, you know, where can we do this? So now we have community gardens all throughout our city, which again, came from ideas that people had. So yeah, I'm excited for this five-year update if you haven't figured it out. Um, and so what if though, Jorge, what if I have a lot of ideas? I mean, I'm just a creative guy. Am I limited to giving one idea or can I give as many ideas as I have? We encourage everyone to give as many as the ideas as possible. Even if someone fills out the survey once and they have ideas later down the road, we encourage people to go in and do the survey once again. We encourage everyone to talk to their friends, families, neighbors to participate. Okay, so this is gonna be online, you know, this video, and somebody can be watching it, you know, a few weeks after we, after we taped it, or it may be a few months. So is there a timeline? So, you know, that I need to make sure that I'm giving, you know, uh, my ideas Ideas, or um, even after we finish a review, do you still accept ideas kind of for the next time? How, how does that work? What's the timeline for yeah, this? Yeah, so we'll be um, collecting community ideas through September 30th of this year. And then after that, we'll move into plan development. Um, but people are welcome to share ideas with us anytime. Um, you can email, you can send them through the website. We have a, a form you can fill out on the website, but we'll take them anytime, even if it's not during an update. And what we do is we store them in what we call an idea bank. Perfect. And so during the next update, we'll just add those to the ideas that we're collecting and put them out to the community. Nice, Yeah. nice. So as one who grew up and now lives in Hillsborough, is there one idea that you would, if, if your secret idea, right? That maybe you just want to include, but you want to tell everybody what is, if, if, if this was Jorge's could magic wand and, and, and unicorn dust, what would your idea be? My idea would be to have city, be city of Hillsborough, be the city to be at. Mm. To have folks come around to enjoy our um, Tuesday night markets, to be the city where to be at on Tuesday night. Nice. And, you know, visit our areas, go through our parks and enjoy themselves here. Nice. So yes, and essentially my, my wish is to have city of Hillsborough be the city to be at. I love that. And, you know, as, as we have grown a lot, you know, just in the 25 years, you know, that we've lived here. And something I hear, you know, from, from folks who are new is, it, it still feels like a small city. I still feel like I'm connected. And I think some of that comes from, you know, the fact that we provide opportunities for people to come together, but also that people can see their idea, you know, being realized and being implemented. So Daisha, is there something you're really looking forward to in this, in this five-year update? Oh gosh, I am just excited to get back out again and start talking to people. Mm -hmm. We had a, you know, during the 
the pandemic. Yeah. Say it out loud. <laughs> um, we, you know, we weren't out in the community like we were previously. So I'm excited to get back out and talk to folks, and I'm excited to see how the ideas maybe have changed since the last update. What yeah. kind of new things are coming in, and what new priorities there are for the community? Yeah. And I really hadn't thought about that, but this is the first update since the pandemic yes. and we have we have a different kind of reality yeah. so that's a great point simone anything in particular you're looking forward to the process yeah. really um you know we talked about the civic leadership academy and i think four or five of them are on the community mm -hmm. engagement committee mm -hmm. and during the academy they really talked about this process being about building community about creating connection between neighbors not just doing the plan not just collecting the ideas but really create forming these relationships and i'm just looking forward to seeing that manifest itself nice and if there's somebody watching who says you know what i want to be a part of this i want to help collect ideas or i want to be you know maybe on one of the committees that helps you know call the ideas or coordinate the ideas um they can go to the website you know and there's you know the city of hillsborough website and there's a 2035 link correct Yes. Yeah, okay. they can go to hillsborough2035.org. Um, there's contact information on there. They could just reach out to me. I'd be happy to talk to them. Wonderful. Well, you know, I truly believe that you can stand anywhere in Hillsborough, 365 days of the year, 24 hours of the day, and see something that has been directly influenced from Hillsborough 2035. No matter if it's the art in the parks, whether it is, you know, the hops being in Hillsborough, one of our community events, um, you know, no matter what, you can see the impact the 2020 and now 2035 has had. So thank you for all your work. Thank you for listening. And we encourage you to be involved in our five-year update. Again, go to the Engage Hillsboro link on our city website or the Hillsboro 2035 link on our city website. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your your great ideas, your crazy ideas, your creative ideas. We want to hear them all because that is what helps make Hillsboro, as Jorge said, the city that everybody wants to come to. Thanks again for joining us for Community Conversations, and we look forward to seeing you back next time.